so glad you can see me. Uh, tonight, I'm going to be in 2 Timothy 2, 1 through 13, striving as a good soldier, striving as a good soldier. I've spoken about this subject before, but in these verses, Paul gives Timothy uh, some exhortation that being a good soldier for Jesus Christ. Now, first off, what marks a good soldier? What, what makes a good soldier? One that's able to take orders? Obey them? I remember our saying was, ours is not to question why, ours is but to do or die. Uh, and I'm sure you all have heard that before. Let me wipe my nose here. Wants to run. Excuse me. And oh, hey, if I got some people out there tonight watching us, uh, don't not yet. Me know. Oh, this two is his. So. This twenty-two. One hundred twenty-two. One hundred two. Okay. <laughs> one hundred two. All right. But be strong. In verses uh, one here in chapter two. Therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. We're to be strong. Now, how in the world are we going to be strong in this, in this world, you know? Well, Michael talked about it. Standing up. Stand up for Jesus. Be strong. Don't be pushed around. Don't be uh, let anybody tell you, hey, you're some kind of Jesus freak. And then just smile at them when they say that to you. Say, you betcha. You betcha I am. Because that's the way we need to be. We need to be totally sold out for Jesus. Not a little bit, not some, but totally sold out for Jesus. Uh, be strong. Be in the grace which is in Christ means keep on being empowered. Keep on being empowered. And that's the power that comes down from only on high. When Jesus Christ comes into us and he gives us that strength. And you know, it's just, it's just amazing when you think about, well, I'm all alone. I can't do anything. Hey, listen, let me tell you something. My father owns the cattle on a thousand hills. But you know what? He owns the hills. And you know what? He made the cattle. Wow. That's what father to have. But it means I keep on being in power, keeping in touch with the power. Keeping in touch with the power. Now, how do you do that, Pastor? Well, I'm going to tell you a little bit. What you need to do is have a good, strong prayer life. You want to have the power of the Lord Jesus Christ in your life? Have a good, strong prayer life. That gives where our strength comes from. It's kind of like, you know, the old boy that bought that chainsaw. Did I ever tell you about that, that boy? Up in Alaska, he bought a chainsaw. And you know, up there, that's a way of life, having a chainsaw. You've got to be able to cut wood and everything. But this is what this man did for a living. He cut wood for a living. But he's never owned a chainsaw. He always used an axe. Well, he bought this chainsaw at this hardware store in town. And they said, you'll be able to cut much, much more wood. And, you know, you know, you just won't be amazed at how much wood you cut with this. So he took it and he had it about a week or so. Pretty soon he'd come back into town. He brought that chainsaw in and put it down on the counter and said, this is the worst thing I've ever owned. He says, this, this, you can't hardly cut no wood with this chainsaw. The fellow said, well, gosh, I'm, I'm, I'm amazed. Let me check it. So he takes the chainsaw and he goes, shoot, shoot, run, 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 run. Guys, what's that noise? What's that noise? <laughs> you got it, right? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> but I'll tell you, if we don't plug into the power that's available to us, we're kind of like that guy with that chainsaw. You know what I mean? Her is kind of like a fellow with a new air conditioner, isn't it? Doesn't plug it into the wall. Doesn't plug it in. Then wonders why it won't cool. And we don't plug into the power of God that's available to us as his children. And then we wonder, I don't feel God. I don't feel him at all. He must have left me. Guess who moved? It wasn't God. It wasn't God at all. Well, number two is, is commit and deposit. Number two, verse two. And these things which thou hast heard of the many uh, uh, from of me among many witnesses, the amount commit to, uh, to, know, to faithful men that it should be able to teach others also. Okay. All right. Well, let's think about that a minute. How do we do that? Seems to me 
excuse me, my nose wants to run up here. I haven't had this for a long time, have I? Yeah. Something up here, excuse me. Oh, la, la, la. <laughs> that wasn't part of the song. <laughs> oh my gosh. And I don't know what it is, but sometimes I get up here and it's just crazy. Okay. But what? I blew that thought right out of my mind. <laughs> what was I thinking of? Oh my gosh. What? <laughs> his writings, his teachings, huh? To whom? To faithful men. To faithful men. It's kind of like when you're talking to a non-believer, what does the Bible say? The Gospels are foolishness to them. The Word of God is foolishness to them. They don't want to hear that. They don't want to, you know, they say, oh my gosh, don't, you're, you're wasting your time sometimes, you know? And I just wondered, uh, are we really? How many, have you ever had the experience where you talk to somebody about Jesus Christ and, and it, it, they just turn, shut you down. A few years later, he's a deacon in a church. Oh, what happened here? He listened to you. He didn't want to, but you planted this seed. Just like Dolly's going to do this week. She's going to be a farmer. <coughs> you know? Yeah. I found out the labor, her farm labor on her ranch when I had to haul that dirt yesterday. No, no. She said, well, call up some men from the church. I said, what? They're all as crippled as I am. <laughs> <laughs> Gonna pull them big tubs around the dirt. Oh, well. Oh, oh I'm sorry, Dolly. You told me not to pick it. Is that picking on you? Okay, I won't. No, sorry. All right. But to who? Trustworthy, reliable people. To what end? That they might teach others also. Well, okay. If we know about Jesus Christ, people have, you've been sitting in Sunday school for a few years, uh, you're not a new Christian, but you know about what the Bible says about salvation, okay? That's the one most important thing you can teach somebody is about salvation. Now, gosh, let me see now. Maybe you can teach more than that. Maybe you could be that Sunday school teacher that we're looking for. Huh? Wow. Think about that. Think about that. To what end? Yeah, to what end? They might teach others also. This is the battle plan of the gospel. Do you get up in the morning and say, here I am, sir, reporting for business, reporting for work, reporting for whatever you want me to do today. Lord, listen, give me an opportunity today in my life to honor you, to bring honor and glory to you, Father. Give me an opportunity to tell somebody about Jesus Christ. Let, give me that shot. You know what? You're going to find out that all of a sudden during that day, somebody's going to come up to you. Hey, you, you, don't you go to Bethlehem? No, no, you don't go to Bethlehem Church. You go to First Baptist Church of Fountain. Nobody caught that, huh? Okay. All right. But we need to make sure that we're ready. And you know what? As if you tell somebody today about the Lord Jesus Christ, that doesn't mean that they're going to, oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. You know, they accept the Lord right then. Like I said a little bit earlier, you plant that seed. You plant that seed. And then that seed, will, somebody will come along and water it. Then somebody will come along and harvest it because that person will get ready to, to have the Lord Jesus Christ in his life. Well, I don't know. I just don't know. It's, uh, it's asking an awful lot, isn't it, to tell somebody. After all, we're saved. We're on our way to heaven. What do we need more people there for? The price of real estate will probably go up. Oh, wait a minute, they don't pay. You don't pay for real estate. Because the Bible says Jesus is going to prepare us a mansion. Wow. So that won't work. Well, let me think of another good reason not to tell people. Well, maybe we should post a sign on the door. Us four no more lock the door. Maybe that's the kind of church that uh, 
community wants. Otherwise, don't bother me. Don't tell me about the Lord. Don't call me. Don't send cards to me. Don't have things down at the church here that I might want to come and see. No, no. I think we need to do what God wants us to do. To tell people about Jesus. After all, that's a great commission that he left us with. Didn't he? Huh? Okay. Amen. All right. Number three, hardship. Endure hardship. In verses three to six, endure hardship. And it says this. Thou, therefore, endure hardness as a good soul of Jesus Christ. No man that warreth and strangeth himself in the affairs of this life, that he may please him who has chosen him to be a soldier. And if you, a man also strive for uh, ministry, yet he is not uh, crowned, except he strive lawfully. Verse 6, the husbandman that laboreth must be partnered with the uh, partner of the fruit, partakers of the fruits. I'll get it right. Partakers of the fruits. Okay. We are to be good soldiers. But what matters as a good soldier in Jesus Christ? Living for Christ. No one is in service and tangles himself with the things of this life. That was in verse 4. <laughs> that means you don't get all caught up in the world and what's going on in the world around you. We more to serve the Lord than to serve the world. You know, uh, it's amazing when you think about uh, if you watch the news. Now, we watch the news, and it's so hard to find a news service that you can trust. They all want to tell you what to think and how to think. Instead of just telling you the news, they want to tell you this is what it is. This, you know, just tell me the news and let me decide for myself. I don't need somebody telling me what they think. Okay? Am I the only one like that? I didn't even get an in. Amen. Okay. No one in service entangles himself with the things of this life, like I said. An athlete, uh, athlete, athletics, excuse me, to have a chance to win, a person is expected to play by the rules. Now that's kind of silly, isn't it? We have rules in this world. Now, not everybody follows them. Not everybody, you know, says, well, I, need, I can't do that because that's against the law. I can't do this, can't do that. But God has got rules for us. And we need to respect those rules. If we want to live a happy, peaceful life, we need to do what God wants us to do in this life. We can't go on off by ourselves and just do anything we want because it feels good, you know, uh, whatever. We need to res respect what's been laid down for us by God. Now how do we know what he wants us to do? Read the book. Read the book. It's in print. Several different versions. If you can't understand one, get one you can. Please. Just don't use one version because that was what your grandma and grandpa always used. Get a version you can understand. All right? Well, number four, consider. Verse 7, consider what I say, and the Lord, uh, the Lord will give thee understanding in all things. Wow! There you go. You do understand what the, that guy's reading to you in the news. You can understand for yourself. Paul urges Timothy to set his mind upon what Paul has written and said. He also wishes for understanding. I, you know, that's something I pray about a lot. God, please give me understanding. Uh, it's some things I just, I, I have trouble with. You know, I don't understand why a person would not believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. I don't understand why a person does not want to turn his life over or her life over to the Lord. I just don't understand it. Uh, I remember when in my life before the Lord, before I accepted him as my Lord and Savior, it was not a very pleasant time in my life. I was being overwhelmed, being a father, two sons, but just overwhelmed. But I, all of a sudden it was like a flash, like, hey, God says, will you wake up and listen to me? 
You need me in your life. And boy, I did. I desperately did. I tell you, when I walked down that aisle and accepted the Lord as my Savior, it changed my life, my family's life. And I just, my son, when he did my ordination sermon, he said, well, my brother and I said, it's just another phase Dad's going through. He'll get through it. He'll be over it shortly. But when he did my sermon, he said, you know what? He's still not over it. <laughs> and you know what? I don't want to get over it. I don't want to get over it. I like getting excited about the Lord. You know, and, and it's just amazing. All right. I should have probably warned you earlier, but this is going to be kind of a short sermon tonight. But I didn't tell Michael, so he could have done a couple more, three or four more songs. But anyway, remember, consider and then remember, from verses 8 to 13. Remember that Jesus Christ of the seed of David was raised from the dead according to my gospel, wherein I suffer trouble as an evil deed uh, doer, for uh, even unto bonds. Paul was in chains. Paul was in chains. And you know what it was amazing when you read about Paul's imprisonment when he was in chains and he was, they were praising God. He wrote some great prison epistles uh, to his people. And it's just amazing. He didn't sit there going, Whoa, oh, is me, misery and despair. And it wasn't for bad luck, I'd have no luck at all. No, he was praising the Lord. Praising. Remember when Paul and Silas was in prison? What did they do? It says midnight. They were praising and singing songs to the Lord, and people were getting saved in the prison. The doors were flung open, and the, you know what? Nobody left. They were having revival. They were having revival. Praise God. Woo. That's what we need. We need revival. All right. Remember, uh, where was it? Okay, I came from that one. Uh, where I said, okay, therefore I endure all things for the uh, uh, elect's sake, that they may also obtain the salvation which is in Christ Jesus the, with eternal glory. It is faithful saying, for if we be uh, dead with him, then we shall also live with him. And if we suffer, we shall also reign with him. And if we deny him, he will also deny us. And if we believe not, Yet he abideth faithful, he cannot deny himself. Paul suffered as an evildoer for the gospel. They, were, they thought Paul, you know, was awful, just terrible. You know, he, he thought people say he had too much learning. You know, he had too much book knowledge. But you know what happened? Jesus Christ on that road to Damascus got a hold of Paul. He turned that old heart of stone into a heart that he could use. He turned that Paul, he turned Saul into Paul. He was no more called Saul, he was called Paul. Folks, that's what we need. We need that road to Damascus experience in our lives. You folks out there on the internet, you need that road to Damascus experience. Let Jesus Christ get a hold of you. Let him change you. Let him make you much, much better than you ever, ever thought possible. Yes. But the word of God was not chained, even if Paul was, verse 9. Paul went uh, on so that he could tell others about the gospel of Jesus Christ. He wanted people to hear the message of salvation. Well, he was concerned for others. Think about that. He was concerned for others. Paul emphasized the faithful saying to remember Dying is living. Enduring equals reigning. Denying him equals being denied. Faithfulness equals he remains faithful. Jesus is always faithful because he is always it's in his nature. He's not capable of not being faithful. It's just not him. Even as Paul urged Timothy to be faithful soldiers, let us be committed to the same as good followers of our Redeemer and Lord Jesus Christ, who is always faithful and true. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right, follow me, please. Father God, as we come to the conclusion of tonight's service, Lord, I just pray, Father, that uh, we'll just not be hearers of the Word, Father, but doers of the Word. We'll just not put heaven in our ears, but we'll have put it in our heart, Father. 
God, I thank you for what you're doing. I thank you for what you're doing here at this church, Father. God, I just praise you for that. And Lord, I just want to, at this time, just ask you, Father, to be with us as we go to our homes. Keep us safe this week. Watch over us and protect us, Lord. And God, thank you for the folks that are so faithful that they're here when the doors are open. Praise you, God, for all you're doing. In Jesus' precious name I pray. Amen. 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 Thank you all so much for coming tonight.